Airplanes have for decades been considered a convenient way of travel, although I don't really understand how packing yourself in with a hundred other people for an expensive seat that can barely contain a seven-year-old is convenient. However, it's a way of traveling that many people around the world are used to every day. What happens when those airplane rides turn frightening, though? Join us as we have a look at some of the most bizarre plane crashes that have ever occurred. Crocodile in the Cabin Now we've all heard of the film Snakes on a Plane, but could there really have been a crash in 2010 that was caused by a crocodile escaping into the cabin of a plane? As it turns out, Chris Wilson had always dreamed of being a pilot, which is why he continued to work with what he referred to as a man that was lucky to be alive because he was so bad at flying. Why Wilson continued to co-pilot with Danny Philomot, who couldn't even read the instruments and would allow the airplane to be packed to capacity, along with allowing live animals to be on board the aircraft, is really anyone's guess. Wilson was so determined to finish his 1,000 hours to become a pilot that he would risk everything, including his life, to work with Philomot. And he would also tell family members that there wasn't a single flight in which some strange occurrence didn't happen. He was ready to leave what he referred to as a dangerous company, but then something unexpected happened during his final flight to the Congo. An alligator on a plane may sound like some kind of bizarre sci-fi film that wasn't very well received by Rotten Tomatoes or moviegoers, but it's strangely one of the stories told by the only surviving passenger. The plane crash killed 19 passengers, including both of the pilots, and it's believed that the cause of the crash is a combination of the plane stalling out and spinning in the sky. The lone survivor of the crash says that one of the crew members saw the two to three foot alligator had escaped from its hiding place in a gym bag. And that's when it created a widespread panic that would cause all of the passengers to undo their seat belts and rush forward toward the front of the plane. This change in weight made the plane stall out, spinning out of control, and killing almost everyone on board. So the next time that you consider taking a flight in the Congo, please be sure that the person next to you isn't carrying a giant reptile in their suitcase, and you should be able to stay safely out of harm's reach for your final destination. A Secret Dentist Drug Lord Suicide is never an easy subject to discuss, and that's why this 1933 crash made such history. Not only was it the deadliest accident of British civil aviation during its time, but it was also thought to be the first airliner ever lost to sabotage. The crewmen quickly realized that there was a fire on board the aircraft and attempted an emergency landing. But just 60 meters shy from landing on the ground, the plane would explode in midair. Investigators found that the fire had not happened by accident and likely began in one of the toilets. That's right, planes in the 1930s had toilets. All clues as to where the fire may have began pointed directly to a German dentist by the name of Dr. Albert Voss, who seemingly jumped from the aircraft before it crashed into the ground. The crash killed all 12 passengers on board, including himself and the three crewmen. However, Dr. Voss's brother tells a more darker tale that may have led to the crash involving drug smuggling and illegal activity. As it turns out, the German dentist had apparently began to sell the drugs that he acquired at work on the black market for hefty sums of cash. And his drug smuggling days around Europe had proven to be more profitable than his dentistry career. Police would soon begin to suspect that something was up, because why else would a small dentist need to fly all over Europe and hang out in shady places? The secret drug business of Dr. Voss, a frequent flyer of Imperial Airways, would begin to unravel. And so, what's a shady dentist to do? Well, Dr. Voss is believed to have plotted his escape, knowing that the police were going to be waiting to arrest him on that final flight. And so, he set fire to the aircraft. He thought that he may have been able to survive the crash, but he was missing one key element that is imperative for survival, a parachute. It would seem that Dr. Voss's attempt at faking his own death led to the unnecessary death of 15 others. So in the end, Voss did evade the police, but it would turn out to be his final act. A View to Die For 
In 1966, a commercial aircraft crashed as it was flying too close to the dangerous mountain terrains of Mount Fuji. The pilot simply wanted to give the passengers, who kept persuading him to fly close to the regions for better photos, the view of a lifetime. But the pilots lost control of the aircraft during a strong bout of turbulence, and the Boeing 707 exploded, plunging into Mount Fuji, making it the fourth aircraft to crash in Japan in just four weeks. As a matter of fact, all 124 people on board died. And some of them had been passengers aboard the plane that crashed at the Tokyo airport the previous day. The Tokyo airport plane crash had 64 fatalities. And to think, these poor people had been involved in two crashes in two days. And that just makes for incredible odds. There was no way to detect turbulence during this time, so pilots probably didn't even know the dangers that awaited them. And it would turn out that turbulence, mixed with a design fault in the aircraft, would cause a catastrophe that marked an important day in history. And it also provides that the customer isn't always right. The pilot should have used his natural instincts to pilot the aircraft and have not listened to the passengers. And it all goes to prove that no one should have died for such a spectacular view. Duct tape disables flight sensors. When we think of duct tape, we don't usually consider it as being powerful enough to take down an entire plane, but it did just that on a flight in 1996. The flight was leaving Miami International Airport with a scheduled layover in Peru on its way to Santiago, Chile. The pilots on the aircraft quickly realized that something wasn't quite right, but they couldn't diagnose the exact problem because several of their cockpit instruments failed to work. Both pilots combined had 28,000 hours of flight experience and believed that they could turn around to make an emergency landing in Peru. But what they didn't realize was that they were flying much lower than they originally believed. Since the pilots had no idea what their altitude actually was, it would cause the aircraft wing to hit water and crash. As it turns out, the controls weren't working because a maintenance worker forgot to remove the tape covering the sensors, which allowed the pilots to see the correct altitude data in the cockpit. Boeing would eventually take the blame for failing to train officers to deal with these emergencies, which would have been avoided by turning off the computer on board and manually flying the aircraft itself. In-Flight Simulator Fanatic Takes Control In 1999, a 28-year-old named Yuji Nishizawa hijacked a Japanese jumbo jet with 500 passengers wielding an 8-inch knife. Yuji would force his way into the cockpit by putting the knife up against the flight attendant's back. The co-pilot was then forced to exit the cockpit, and that's when Yuji would stab the pilot in the neck and throat after he refused to steer the aircraft toward a U.S. military base in Tokyo. The hijacker and the pilot fought for control of the aircraft, and eventually the co-pilots and the pilot were able to subdue the man until they could land it safely. Sadly, however, the pilot would die from his wounds shortly after landing, but will forever be a hero for saving 500 passengers that day from an in-flight simulation fanatic's real-life flying fantasy that could have turned out deadly for everyone on board. The Hudson River Plane Crash Airplanes have one incredibly dangerous foe that they often come across in the sky, birds. Vultures, swans, and even geese have been known to be the reason for quite a number of plane crashes in history. But the pilot of a U.S. Airways flight in 2009 would use his excellent piloting skills and quick thinking to avoid being part of the list of deadly plane crashes caused by birds. Less than three minutes into a flight from New York to Charlotte, North Carolina, the pilot, Chelsea B. Sullinger, otherwise known as Sully, radioed air traffic control to let them know that at least one bird had struck the plane. And that's when he declared an emergency. The last thing heard from the flight was that they were going to make a landing in New Jersey because it was closer. But as it turns out, the pilot had to choose to land the commercial plane in the Hudson River. In the end, no one would be injured, and it was the quick thinking of these pilots that made sure that all the passengers landed safely. Sully, the pilot, came out of the incident as a true hero and even checked the flight twice to make sure that everyone had gotten off the plane safely, even as it was filling with water and sinking into the river. 
There were just a few reported cases of hypothermia and shock, but everyone on the flight would end up going home safe and sound. It's reported that 56,000 birds have struck planes between 1998 and 2004, and five large jetliners have had major accidents from bird strikes since 1975. And so, it would seem that luck was on the side of Sully and all of the passengers aboard Flight 1549. But don't get us wrong, we hope this list doesn't steer you clear of any potential travel plans, although after hearing about it, you might be safer to pack up your car and go on a road trip for your next vacation. These are just a few of the most bizarre plane crashes we've been able to uncover, but have you ever heard of any others? And have you been on any of these? Let me know all about it in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Pan Am Flight 6 Leaving from sunny Honolulu and headed to San Francisco, Pan Am Flight 6 left the runway, piloted by Captain Richard Ogg. Around halfway through the duration of the flight, the plane would gain altitude, but then the power input dropped.